Take it away. Okay, can we have a roll call just to have a record of who's here? Um, well, we know Saren is here, right? Yes. <laughs> and Elise, I heard, is here, right? I did hear her. Wait. I heard her. I don't know where I heard her too. Um, Elise, are you there? She isn't here any longer. Well, she'll pop back up. So, uh, who else is here besides Saren and me? And Ruth, can you? Um, oh, is Ruth there? Ruth is here. Ruth, oh, can okay, you? Oh, okay, great. Um, let's see here. I will ask her to start her video and let's see if this works. Uh, Ruth? Yep. Ruth is here. Excellent. So we have Ruth, Sarah, and Hi, Ruth. And Hello. Myra, and did Elise come back? Not yet, but I'm sure she will. Um, did, because was her video on? Did anyone notice? I obviously didn't. Was she the one who was calling in? No, it wasn't. Actually, she was the one that said that wasn't her. Oh. And I still don't know who that person is. So. And then um, we have uh, we have Xander here, who hasn't been sworn, but he is a new appointed member of the committee. So, Xander, are you there? Yes. Hi. Are you there? Yes. Oh, no, I'm on mute. I'm not muted. Hi. No, we hear you. We oh, hear I you. hear you now. Okay. I hear you. Hi. Okay, you want to introduce yourself? And welcome Hi. to the committee. And Hi, you can't Alexander. vote today, but you can participate. Okay. Um, I was appointed as of this morning or yesterday uh, to the committee. Uh, I am, I've been an Amherst resident for five years. Uh, I'm a UMass double alum from undergrad and grad school, a master's degree in higher education administration I just finished back in May. Um, I also graduated from Amherst High School in 2005. Uh, so I'm a long-term Amherst person, but I've only lived here since 2015. I grew up in Conway. So I was a school choice kid at Amherst High School. Um, cool, okay, welcome. What's your last name, Zander? Crowley. Crowley. Crowley, okay. Mm -hmm. I have a twin sister who also went to high, the high school. I thought so. I did, yes, Eighth that was grade. correct. Who started at the high school before I did. So she, she went from seventh grade all the way through. I started in 10th grade. Wasn't she Adrian or something? Hazel. Hazel. Oh, well. Oh, well. I got that wrong. But I remembered you were a twin. Okay. It was a big, oh. it was a big deal. The first few months I was in the high school, it was, oh, you're Hazel's sibling. Oh, you're Hazel's sibling. <laughs> That's Chris Gould, Chris Gould, Chris Gould actually called me Hazel like first I don't know week of classes and got a lot of crap back from me. <laughs> and we have another member, but I guess he isn't present. Is yes, yes. Yeah, so he actually just sent me an email as well. I'm getting so many emails coming at the same time. So our other uh, newly appointed uh, member, his name is Christopher. Blout, I believe is his last name. Uh, he said, good morning. I will unfortunately not be able to attend today. I typically have a full surgical schedule. So this time in the future will be a challenge. I will have to check back with you on possible times. So, okay. so he may want to change the meeting time. Um, and yeah, and so we could to, discuss we'll that at a that future, um, yeah, at a future meeting or you know we can email about scheduling um but we can't email uh, due to the open meeting law we, we're not supposed to uh talk about sub um items on the agenda um that are you know new business um but we can discuss like projects and grants and stuff like that and and uh any variance requests through the AAB items such as that. But scheduling of meetings, we can certainly email about 
Um, so uh, when the time comes um, and everyone's agreeable, we to be agreeable to discuss a, a meeting time or day change, um, I can send out a doodle bowl or just send out an email with suggested times. What is Christopher's last name, Maureen? B L O U L T. It's L T? No, I, B L O U N T. N T, yeah. thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And I know someone who's, who has that name who says Blunt, and I'm sure there are people who say Blount, and I don't know what he says. But, okay. Yeah, it is better maybe for him to be present so we can schedule. What is his time? Maybe that's what we should learn, right, Myra? Well, he what is the time he recommends that is doable for her for him? We yeah, Maureen, um, you said you were going to email him and find out. That's what I think would be the best thing to do is to yes. find out what what times would work for him. Um, and I yeah. I don't know I don't know enough about this, but. I don't know if it needs to be work during the work day. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't. It, can, it could be at night. It could be at night. Um, if, every, if everyone's agreeable to that. Um, so, um, you know, I would say if everyone's agreeable to a, you know, anytime Monday through Friday, nothing too early, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I do have other meetings at night, so. That, that right, and also we need to find out what Patricia's plan will be too. Yeah, that's another issue. Thank you for bringing that up because yeah. she emailed uh, me and Maureen, maybe everybody, uh, about an hour ago and said she would not be present. Xander, Patricia um, DeAngelis is the liaison from the town council to this committee. We were hoping to really have a lot of interface with her, and she hasn't been able to be at several meetings. So okay. uh, it would, we have to work out. Somebody has men in the background that I hear, and I whistle. Oh, it's me. Out. Yeah. Oh, that's you. <laughs> this, the whistling is from my headphones or laptop. Oh, really? Oh, it yeah. sounds like a tea kettle. I know. I'm more, I might buy a new headphone. So I'm sorry about that. And I'll mute myself <laughs> while there are people talking next to me. So I'm going to. Oh, okay. It. All right. Um, anyway, so what was I saying before I lost my train of thought? Pat. Oh, Pat. Yeah. So we, um, we need to come up with some, I mean, we don't know why she isn't here. So if it's going to be a continuing problem, we might need to make alterations that would involve her needs, you know, everybody's needs, but I'm hoping that we can have interface with the town council because I think it's pretty important for us th to have some direct means of recognition with the town council. Yes. Um, so uh, if Maureen, if you want to take on the responsibility of contacting all those people to find out why you know what their availability is um maybe we can come to some uh, agreements i'm not wild about evening meetings myself but um i don't know how anybody else feels about it i would prefer not to have evening meetings you would prefer that too i would prefer right. not to have evening meetings my hours i wrote this back in my email to uh maureen was that you who emailed me this morning with the yes, official yes, that was me. Yes. And so I was I wrote back and said, hours are fine. This is fine. This works fine for me. My hours did just get reduced at work starting Monday. I was one of the Sorry. furloughed, partial oh. furlough people from UMass. Um, so afternoons are suddenly very available for me. <laughs> Yeah, we're sorry. To hear I can you. I can Thank do you. afternoons too. No problem for me. And I can too. Except but that that's good to know. Um, so, um, for everyone here, would afternoons like any time between you know noon and five work? Any time between one and five is fine with me. Yeah, and it's okay for me too. Perhaps he could do you know three thirty to five or something like that. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how any 
He's a dental surgeon, I think, um, from what I recall. And he, I don't know how he can give up work time. So, you know, time is money. <laughs> so I, I don't know how that's going to work for him. And I don't know what Pat DeAngelis' things are, but we have a little bit of flexibility for sure. I don't know if Tori does though, and she's not here. And I don't know if Elise does. Elise is lost. But clearly she was attempting to be here. So I wonder what happened. Um, do you have a way to contact her, Maureen? Do you have a telephone number or something? Uh-oh, everything is lost. <laughs> I can't I'm here, anything. Myra. You're there, okay. <laughs> That's right. No, Maureen's <laughs> trying to talk. She's just muted. Oh, Maureen is lost. So Meyer, while you were talking, I just moved into a a, a, a room where there's no people because there uh, are okay. two individuals that were talking the whole time. Um, so I think my, uh, Elise did just send me an email, and Elise, can you? Supposedly she is here. Elise, can you? Are you here? Now I am, but I, I keep coming. I can't stay connected for some reason. Okay, so you were the phone number the whole time. What? No, I was sending emails trying to find out how to get back on. Yeah, I, I wasn't. Yeah, I, I can't seem to stay on. I can't seem to stay connected, even okay. though I can hear and see you. Okay. Oh. So I'm not sure how that, what Are you to on do. A computer or a phone? iPad. I never use the phone for Zoom. Aha, uh -huh, okay. All right, well, we're all here now, so currently we have a quorum. Okay. Um, so, yay, maybe we can go, oh, uh, did you hear we have a new, me a new member present who hasn't been sworn, but who is present? Please. I heard some of it, but I was so busy trying to figure out how to get back on that I missed okay. some. So Xander Crowley. Hi. Hi. That's I was late. appointed yesterday and have not been sworn in because when I called town, the town office this morning, they said, can you, is there any possible way you'd be willing to wait until after the election? Because we are so swamped, we would like you to wait. I said, yes, oh. that makes total sense. Okay, so you'll be <laughs> it being the that the election week. is two weeks away and they are probably going crazy. Um, so hi. Thank you for your flexibility. Hi. Yeah, it's fine. It's also pouring out, and so I didn't want to leave today. Well, you would probably do it virtually. Yeah. Uh, no, apparently they're doing them outside the town hall in person. Really? Mm. Oh, my. Is what yeah, not I don't the know best who day. I spoke to, but that's It's a great day said. for rain, but it's not the best day for getting sworn in. Yes. And just to recap with the discussion of, of the members that are present, if needed, are, are folks available? Uh, between one and five, is that Monday through Friday or is that on specific days if the meeting were to be changed? I'm available. Fridays are not good for me. Ruth said that Fridays aren't good. Right. Fridays Tuesdays, um, I, Tori and I are on the, um, for better or for worse, the, the Writers Council of the PVTA. Okay. And that, that is on the third Tuesday from 3.30 to 5. So any day, any probably other Tuesdays might be, that would be fine, but not the third Tuesday. And that meeting's third Tuesday at what time? 3.30 to 5. Okay, bad. Oh, that's interesting. Um, you know, at a future meeting, it might be useful to hear about uh, your involvement with that committee. It might be interesting if there were anything to report. Oh, okay. <laughs> At the moment, there isn't really anything to report. All right. But we can move right along to snow removal, right okay. under, under new business. Last, just to keep people a little bit apprised, uh, when the people came from the consultant, group. Um, Jerry Weiss uh, also came, he's the former chair of this meeting, of this group who was on this committee forever. And he made a statement about uh, shoveling snow and uh, 
and how inadequate it is. Um, and we all know that it's inadequate. And Xander, I have to congratulate you that in your interview, you talked about snow removal with a pretty cool solution, actually, I thought, which was since uh, Xander is a wheelchair user, Elise, and Ruth. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, right. You can't tell. Yeah. I yeah. use okay. a manual so, chair. <laughs> so Xander has um, the same kind of issues with getting around in the snow. And one of the things he brought up was that there is property that is the responsibility of the town and property that is the responsibility of the uh, property owner or the property renter or the business owner or and nobody know, nobody knows where the lines are drawn or or if they do they don't pay attention to that and so the sidewalks are impassable even if everybody's trying to do what they're supposed to do which they often are not because of whose responsibility it all is. And then, so I talked to Maureen about it and Maureen said that actually with COVID, she's even more worried than in the past because there are a lot of businesses and churches um, that are responsible as well that are not even operational right now. So- And I hadn't even thought, of, until I saw the, the letter, I hadn't even thought about that problem. Right. Nor and I saw the and went, oh, wow. God, no, no. So Maureen suggested that perhaps we send a note, which I wrote, to the town, asking the town to take over that responsibility for this year, um, at least as a good beginning, because of the, pro the, the haphazardness of the businesses being open, the churches being open, people's understanding of their responsibility if they're not open, absentee landlords and it got very complicated and so we uh we're hoping to get approval for this letter to be sent to the town manager from this committee um because um because we're concerned that the already difficult situation with snow removal will be even more difficult this year maureen do you want to add anything to did i forget anything no, I, I think that covers it. Um, I would add that, and I will acknowledge that uh, the the town budget and staff. Um, I, I don't know what where we're at with that in regards of is there enough funds and staff people to take that responsibility on, and so I think that if the town is unable to take the, the, the responsibility for the winter months in, uh, in particularly during COVID, then, then, um, then um, there should be a letter that goes out to the downtown businesses and building owners reminding them that it is their responsibility to shovel and, and provide ice removal. So, so I this do, is step one? Yeah, I think this is a good, you know, I, th I think this is a good recommendation from the committee. If everyone is, is agreeable to that, then, you know, maybe the town should think about um, providing snow and ice removal. Um, it's just a suggestion. Um, again, I don't know where the town is at with budgeting and staffing. So if that's not feasible, then the next uh, another memo could go out to the businesses um, as a as a reminder, and then from us or from the manager. Um, I could talk to the town manager about that about the protocol. Oh, I think I'm being kicked out of this room. Okay, okay. Uh, bear with me for one moment. Okay. Does anybody want to say anything about this while Maureen is trying to relocate? Yeah, I just Mary, I just want to say I thought that. Um, Memo to Paul Bachman was a very well written. Thanks. And does anybody have any comments, any additions, any suggestions, any deletions? I mean, I think I understand the budget issues. I understand the staffing issues. I think that this is such a huge public safety issue. Um, it's not just a problem for wheelchair users. It's a problem for anybody walking safely in the streets and if businesses are closing or not having their regular hours it's going to be a huge issue to make sure that that this is it gets done and part of the problem is that 
there are even if the businesses you know so like the fire department's really good and cvs is really good but there's often this like you know eight inch break between where the cvs property ends and where the f you know afd property begins and so you get this you know ice chunk between the two properties i wonder if it's feasible for somebody to just go through and like i don't know do um like what's the quality control <laughs> quality control on the street like i, I don't know i just it's i worry about question. that okay anybody else okay so i guess in the absence of maureen i'll entertain a motion to send the letter if anybody wants to move that i'm back oh okay sorry i sec i second the motion did you hear what xander said sadly xander if you could just sum up what you just said sorry i keep on moving there's a lot of noise interruptions uh, but i, I think, think now i'm safe with the no noise level here i all i said was i wondered because part of the problem is where the property ends question i think is a really big issue um so like between and i was saying between cvs and amherst fire department there's often um, like a space where there's a chunk of ice that gets left because cvs only is going to go to the end of their property and afd doesn't i don't know so i wondered if there was some sort of like quality control that they could at least or in the letter, if we are going to write to the businesses who have properties downtown, making it clear where their properties actually are, so that they are actually fulfilling the duty of clearing all of the street. I That's a really good suggestion. So I don't know if you're familiar with our town's GIS program. It's an interactive tool that all members of the public can utilize. Um, I don't, I would assume that if you have a visual impairment, maybe it- I don't. Be, uh, I'm just saying in general, um, for Myra's sake. Um, so the, the GIS program um, shows where the property lines are. It is a playing mm -hmm. tool, so it, it can be off by, you know, five, 10 feet sometimes, or sometimes it is pre precise, but it's, it's a guiding um, tool for folks. So maybe in, if there is a letter that goes out to the businesses, um, including that information in it. Yeah, they can include that link. And then also, you know, for further questions or, or comments, um, they can certainly contact me. Of course, right. it's a, if it's off by eight or 10 feet. I mean, Xander right. was talking about eight inches. That yeah, claims, I hear you. Unless he can't get through. And, you know, nor can a lot of other people, depending, because yeah. it's often a piece of ice by the time the, right. you know, situation happens, and then everybody can get hurt on it. And so, it's not, yeah, it's not but, just wheelchair users, it's the elderly, it's right, right. anybody with, anybody with a cane, anybody who's, I mean, or, you know, a 15-year-old running down the street too fast. <laughs> so do we need to change this letter or does this letter work as is uh, as a first step? I would say the letter works as is as a first step. Okay. All right. Does anybody want to move that we send the letter to the town manager? No. I mean, I hate to move it because I, sorry, I had interruptions. I didn't read the letter, but I like the idea. So we should go with it. Uh, <laughs> so does, Xander, does Xander, do you, uh, do you have it in front of you? Any chance? Xander, do you have the letter in front of you? Or Ruth? Or Ruth? Could someone read it aloud? Uh, For Saren? I have it. I can find it. Let's see. Where, where was it? It was in the email Attached. I sent on Friday, I believe. Ruth said she read it. Um, Elise, were you able to find it? Uh, I can't what find it quickly. Oh, I see it now. Let me, 
I can read it. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Can you read it aloud? Oh, okay. All right. Wait. Because Elise didn't see it either. Okay. This is addressed to Paul. As the winter approaches and in light of the fact that many Amherst businesses are either temporarily or permanently closed, we are concerned that snow removal may be particularly spotted this year. We are requesting that the town take on the responsibility for appropriately clearing sidewalks and curb cuts so that people with mobility disabilities as well as the public at large can move safely around town. Inadequate snow, snow removal in Amherst has been a serious concern of the DAAC for many years. In the downtown area, businesses, houses, uh, worship, and the town of Amherst have shared responsibility for keeping sidewalks appropriately cleared. Unfortunately, the di divergent interpretation of this responsibility has sometimes resulted in sidewalks and crosswalks that are impassable and dangerous for people with disabilities that impact their mobility. With the closure or restricted hours of many businesses and churches, we can only assume that the problem will be even more prevalent this winter. Consequently, we are requesting that the town pay increased attention, atten increased attention to downtown snow removal and that they assume the responsibility for clearing sidewalks that they may be neglected by closed businesses or institutions in downtown Amherst for the entire duration of the ongoing state of emergency for COVID-19. Penalties and fines that accrue due to this increased vigilance should help to offset any additional expenses to the town. Says the letter, which is very nicely put and I move that we sent this letter to the town manager. I think it's beautifully written. Yes. Is there a second? Second. Oh, that was, who seconded it? Xander. You can't, because you're not official. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. No, 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 that's fine, sorry. Then it, I'll... Is, will anyone else second it? <laughs> Am I allowed to second it? Elise, can you second it? I'll second it. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, can we have a roll call yeah, vote? Roll call vote. Actually, um, there's one thing that I thought that I wrote that maybe you changed, Maureen. When you said mobility disabilities, and I wrote disabilities affecting mobility, because not everybody, I don't have a mobility disability, but in the snow, my disability impacts mobility. Right? I mean, I can walk. Yeah, I um, didn't adjust that, but you didn't. No, but let me um, All right, let me pull here. up. So I would say disabilities impacting mobility. Or how about people yes. with disabilities? That's fine. Right. It's not you know, that's more generic. Disability. Okay, that's fine. Sounds I have good. a question. Yeah. It says penalties and fines that accrue to this due to this increased vigilance should help offset any additional expenses to the town. What does yeah. that mean? Does, well, they are- Are they actually fined if they don't clear their snow? They are allowed to. They are allowed they to be fined. Whether their own discretion, but they are allowed yeah. to. Well, there is one little thing I wonder if we should add to this letter but I don't want to delay sending this letter, but just a thought, or we could be, it could be a different letter. Uh, I haven't really been uh, checking on the snow removal downtown at my age now, but when I used to attend meetings a lot, I would notice they would dump the snow into handicapped parking places especially around banks. And I used to go to lots of meetings and like one, at least one 
HP parking place will be totally black with I, uh, with snow. And they used to do it, I know once at Bertucci restaurant when there was a Bertucci pizza place there, they would dump it there. And I called the manager, I said, you cannot do this. I wonder if we should add it to the snow removal thing and to that they have to keep an eye that the snow also is not plowed into HP places that they are clearly do you think the town does clear. That? Do you think the town does that, or do you think I have not? Do well, that? I don't know who clears yeah, I don't the know town what do you parking think, places. Yeah, um, I'm, I don't know uh, who does that, but I, I think that it would be nice to, you know, I think it would make sense to reference that mm -hmm. in the first paragraph of the memo. Um, you know, for appropriately clearing sidewalks, curb cuts, crosswalks and HP. HP. Yeah. Does that okay. make sense? Yes, definitely. They should be aware of that. Yeah. Okay. So with those two adjustments, take out mobility and add HP parking spaces, do we have, uh, we should take a roll call vote. Ruth, how do you vote? I'm in favor of uh, adding that. Okay. Elise? In favor. Aaron? Yes. In and favor. Yes. Okay. So we have four yeses. We're sorry, Sandra, you can't vote. That's but, okay. Yeah, okay. But we do have a quorum, even without you officially. So that's good. Okay. Um, we can move. Is on. there a way for us, if, if it's up to. to if it's discretionary, who gets fined and how related to snow removal, is there a way for us to pressure them to actually do that? Uh, potentially, but not in this memo. Okay. No, I, I understand not in this memo. I'm just saying that if that's a thing that's discretionary, that might be another way. I mean, I'll, there, at this point, I wouldn't, I don't want to, you know, hold anybody's foot to the fire, but that's another okay. way to maybe thinking about this. Something to think about. Mm -hmm. All right, Maureen, do you want to share with us the status of the report, where we are with it, and the, also the grant that you applied for? Because we actually don't know how it ended up. Myra, before we go oh, on. Sure. Yep. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, that issue about finding people. I mean, I think that's something that Pat ought to bring to a council meeting as well because it's, it's not just um, for uh, the town manager to take into consideration, but for the council as well, because that would be something that they would have to enforce. So I would suggest that that also be, um, you know, discussed or sent to Pat. That's a, that's a concern that we would like her to bring to the whole council. Julie? Yeah, very good point. Good. Yeah, very good point. All right. Maureen, can you tell us about the, the status of the report and the grant? Because they're sort of interrelated, so you can do it any way you'd like. Sure, thank you. Yeah, so just to recap, because I, I, I know that I did briefly talk about this, the ADA self-evaluation and transition plan with Zelder, Zel, Zelder? Is that how you say your name, Zelder? Xander. Xander, thank you, Xander. Um, at your interview, but let me just recap. So the, the town, the existing ADA self-evaluation and transition plan uh, is from, I believe, 2006, and it's um, outdated due nope. to, <laughs> due to uh, updated uh, regulations uh, concerning ADA regulations, and there's new buildings, new trails, new parking lots, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so we uh, this year we've been updating the plan. Um, we started this project before COVID, and uh, and because it was grant driven, we needed to continue it um, throughout the summer. And so the self evaluation um, included uh, evaluating all our town facilities that are open to the public. So like town hall or town like our town buildings such as town hall, uh, our parks our trails, mm, our parking lots. And we did a sample of sidewalks downtown um, 
and I believe I believe that that was it. And we also uh, looked at the website to see if if they're ADA compliant. And we worked uh, closely with consultants. Um, um, they're um, consultants called uh, DAC consultants. Mm -hmm. um, they're the ones that physically came to Amherst to uh, evaluate all our facilities. And the transition plan is the second step, which is uh, taking that information from the evaluation and um, listing what is the what, what are all the the areas of concern that need to be um, uh, made improvements by the town because they're they're physical barriers um, or for the website um, you know there there's barriers for that as well um, and it's also looking at meeting rooms and like um, and devices uh, like listening devices and stuff like that um, and so and so the transition plan is a, a list of priority prioritization um, priority projects um, based on the hazard and based on public comments and based on the costs. And so the consultants uh, recently provided us the draft plan. Um, and they actually just this morning emailed me the executive summary for it. Um, I haven't had a chance to, to even open it really. Um, and so uh, planning staff um, and all town staff rather are um, currently reviewing the, the draft plan. And uh, once we have um, looked, looked over it, we'll be sharing it with the DAC and members of the public and uh, perhaps hold a, like a public forum and, and perhaps provide a presentation to the town council. Okay. Um, and so that's step one is the plan. Now, the step two is talking about, well, it's great that you have the plan, but what do you do with it? Um, so, um, you know, there's capital planning projects and grants and, you know, there's always, there's always uh, projects that, that could be related to, to the findings from this plan. And so um, the next step is talking about, well, how, how can we implement this document to become a living document um, so the town can keep, keep making improvements to, uh, to ADA matters. Um, so I guess that, I think that's the update that I got. Um, so once uh, I, um, town staff have reviewed it, I, again, I will be sharing a copy with you and we can, you know, further discuss it at a meeting. And then the let's see here the the mass office of disabilities um they have an annual improvement grant program um and this year we applied it was due at five o'clock on friday and i submitted it at 4 48 p.m on friday <laughs> that's pretty good yeah um oh. 12 minutes to spare. 12 minutes to spare. So, <laughs> so the scope, um, the scope changed. Uh, it did include more items, but after getting cost estimates from our town engineer, we quickly realized that the scope of work would have to be reduced. So what was the final um, scope of work would be the um, replacing uh, the existing crosswalks at the intersection of North Pleasant and Kellogg Street, Ke Kellogg Ave rather, and that's where the post office is. So um, each of those crosswalks, um, there's one, two, three cr crosswalks. Um, so the concrete will be removed and then replaced and the markings will be um, crosswalk markings like um, striping and, and such that will be redone um, and audible beacons um, um, will be um, returned to that intersection. There used to be an audible beacon there. Um, I guess there were bells and it was sort of problematic for abutting properties. Um, and so this new audible beacon will be, you know, uh, uh, I guess it's a person, it's like a, uh, a person saying, you know, cross the street. Um, so the, the really loud um, bell noise. Um, and so, yeah, that, that concludes it. It was going to include uh, replacing the sidewalk 
along Kellogg Avenue, but that it was amazing because that's been a disaster for yeah ever. So the MOD grant, they, they do award grants up to $250,000. However, when you take a look at all the projects that they've approved over the last five years, on average, they award projects that are, are about $50,000. So it's taking a gamble of if we applied for a project that would be, um, if, if we included Kellogg Avenue, I don't have the cost estimates in front of me, it would have definitely brought it over $100,000. And I don't know if it would be feasible for us to get that grant. I think based on the previous awards, it seems that MOD wants to give out more money uh, to various communities um, so everyone gets a little piece of money th than opposed to granting big, um, big uh, chunks of money for fewer communities. That's just my personal take on it. So we did that. And, you know, um, um, the, you know, maybe next year that could be just the primary focus is just redoing Kellogg Avenue um, and not and not think of, and not include uh, crosswalks um, at all. So yeah, so that's my update. And I probably should know uh, by December whether we get that grant. Can and I ask a sidewalks question? A side? A what? sidewalk question? Oh, sure, yep, yep. So I live in North Amherst. I live in presidential apartments. Yep. Um, so I live almost exactly halfway between campus and um, North Am Amherst Center. And our sidewalks are terrible. Um, they are incredibly dangerous in a couple places. I've fallen and tri I've tripped and flipped over a couple of times. Um, we also have growth from bushes that grow off of the people's properties and so far into the sidewalk that it leaves, you know, a third of the sidewalk available. Mm -hmm. I understand that the center of town is, you know, where all of the businesses are and it's where the tourists are and so it's where the money is and that that has to look nice and that has to be all pretty and all of that. But what capacity do we have to expand beyond downtown to helping sidewalks in other neighborhoods that maybe don't have as much traffic, though we do have a lot of traffic on our sidewalks in North Amherst through mm. North Amherst. That leads us into the much bigger question. I had a Which, feeling that this was gonna lead into a yeah. much bigger question. Well, the much bigger question that Maureen and I have been sort of grappling with a little bit is how do we, as a committee, bring to the attention of the town uh, in a way that's gonna have any action taken or any potential action taken how do we bring the needs of the community um, in places that are not in this report because the sidewalks are the sidewalks and things in the downtown was the, the the scope of their evaluation they did not go all over town that was not part of what they were asked to do and there are some serious issues everywhere mm -hmm. and yeah. so the question is how do we let it be known or how do we get some attention to sidewalks which are for many people a nice convenience and for many of us a lifeline mm -hmm. um, and so this is why i i wish pat were here because i think that we the question is can we have a direct line to the town council and if we can how do we use that direct line in the way that would be the most advantageous and it's not an answer we can get today um but you know there are as xander brought up as we are all aware as elise brought up at the last meeting some yeah. really really serious issues as saren brought up at the last meeting and i just want to say where Saren said she thought she was gonna be dumped out of her wheelchair in the parking lot across from the library. 
when I was on this committee in the <laughs> 1990s with Saren, she said the exact same thing. And yeah. nothing, nothing ever wow. happened. Nothing. Nothing. Holy cow. I mean, the yeah. sidewalks. Yeah. So, and when I heard her say it, I sort of freaked out internally, which is perhaps why I got a little too verbal. But uh, I heard her say the same thing 25 years ago. And, and so, and that's yeah. in a downtown, very public area. Yeah. So the, the question is, how do we go about having our ideas and needs heard? And I don't know if anyone on the committee has anything to say about, about process that we might begin to engage in. And I am open for comment. I mean, it's hard. It's, it's hard to figure out. I mean, the, out. There, is, uh, that, the, there is a commission, I think, in Boston and that you don't really want to take the legal steps. You just want to negotiate and make them aware of the struggles their people are having, although probably we're at the bottom of the pile when uh, it comes to our needs, but we shouldn't be. We should be handled with higher priority. But I never see that from the town. So a thought comes to my mind. I wonder if we should, now Pat's attendance is kind of questionable. I'm not sure whether she'll be, something interferes with her. I'm sure she's very, very busy being in the council. But I wonder if we should try to meet with a group from the council, ask for a meeting, and then itemize our priorities what we want addressed and bring it to their attention in person would that be more effective i know Ma uh, maureen i don't want to put you in a uh, maybe you just listen because you are a town employee so you know you don't want to find yourself in a role defending the town or talking against the town so Maybe we should just, the members should just brainstorm how we should approach this. Now we have new, uh, new blood in the committee. What do you all think? I think one of the things, one of the questions that I would sort of maybe put to the town council is what is the scope of this committee? Because if the scope of this committee is to yeah create accessibility for all community members across the entire town of Amherst, that does not include, that includes more than just making pretty and beautifying and making downtown Amherst yeah. accessible to everybody. There are people who live all parts of Amherst who uh, need and should have access to all parts of Amherst accessible to them and sidewalks having clear safe sidewalks isn't just a safety concern for people in wheelchairs or people with disabilities it's a safety concern for everybody you know um, yeah elderly mothers the uh, pushing of, strollers you know right and if Elise, you want Ruth, do you have any comments i can't I, see if there are hands raised so Okay, and um, I, I know I think she's making some really good points. Sandra's making really good points, and I like the way you think. Um, and I agree that it should be for everybody, um, and not just downtown, because there are people who live all over who need these sidewalks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I have the area. I, I asked um, Maureen to come and look at my neighborhood a month ago, and. I've lived in this same neighborhood for 40 years um, and the trees on High Street have gotten much, much bigger and they were a problem when I moved here because um, I used to push a stroller and it was difficult, but it was fine. And now it's so dangerous to walk on that sidewalk. The trees are gigantic. The roots have pushed the sidewalks way out of line. There is a guy who lives on High Street who uses a chair and he can't go anywhere. Except that's ridiculous. Right. When he leaves his yeah. house, he can't go to the left because that sidewalk is too broken up. 
you can't cross the street to get on the other sidewalk because that's the one that's completely destroyed. And, um, you know, it's just one street and there are many like that. That's and horrible. So yeah. I, it's been an, it's been longstanding um, concern. And I think it is important for the town council. I mean, I don't even know what, what to do about it because when you go on the street, I even said to David at one point, when you walk on a certain street, I said, how do the people on the cross country team from the high school actually run on this street without injuring themselves? And he said, well, if you can see where you're going, you know where to put your feet. Aye, aye, and, aye. And, yeah. and yeah. I, was, I was like, uh, how could you, there's so many places that you can't put your feet. How could that be true? Um, and, you know, for a while when I was at the high school, I, I talked to some kids and I said, if you want to have a real public service project, you as runners ought to go see the town and talk about the danger on the course that usually is, you know, um, you know, races, you know, they have races in this neighborhood around the high school and they, uh, you know, the, the other schools come and this, there's a course that they usually run and it's d deadly. And I said, if you really want to do a favor to yourselves and to the town as a civics project, why don't you talk to the town about how dangerous the course is? And nothing ever happened. But, it, you know, it's all over. And it's for them, it, you know, it, they're not disabled. Um, but they could easily become disabled if they put their foot in the wrong place. Yeah. Um, temporarily, anyway, if they're lucky. So I don't, I don't know what to do about it. I think talking to the whole council is perhaps or at least a subgroup is perhaps a you know we we have to have pat um to yeah. tell us what to do so i think it's really critical that we find a time that we can meet that she can meet um i mean because without her i don't think we have any way to do this because maureen would go maureen's chain of command is not to the town council but we can have a, a, a conduit to the town council, right? I mean, did I get that right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, even in Pat's email this morning when she apologized for not being able to attend um, this meeting today, she said, I'll pull, pull it up. I, um, please share my apologies with the committee, I will, watch a recording of the meeting and check in with Maureen later. If there is anything specific you would like me to bring to or ask the council, please let me know. Yeah. So she is uh, your direct um, conduit, I guess, to the, to the town council. Yeah. Um, I also, I feel that this conversation is, um, is very timely um, in regards of updating the, the ADA self-evaluation and transition plan um, and talking about process of how does that uh, become a living document and getting advocated for for um, for allocations of funds and such, and uh, perhaps uh, someone from you know the town manager's office and the town council could speak about that process um, and and lay that out. Um, and about the evaluation of the sidewalks uh, in the in the transition plan, um, it wasn't included in this phase of the transition plan, largely due to the cost to evaluate every sidewalk in town. Um, and so we wanted, I was able to persuade the consultants to at least provide a sample. Of, of, of what a evaluation looks like. So uh, staff could use that as a, as a, um, a template of, of what to look for. And so fortunately, unfortunately, you know, many of the curb cuts, crosswalks, sidewalks, and parking areas in downtown need improvement. And so those same findings uh, could then be um, mimicked in other locations. Um, and so that's one avenue of, of moving forward of, of, you know, 
the plan said, you know, you look for these sorts of things that are wrong um, for the sidewalks on North Pleasant, for example. Well, those sa same standards would apply for the sidewalks near Presidential, um, where um, Dander lives. Um, Pleasant, it's still North Pleasant Street. It is still North, yeah, I know. My um, entire life happens on North Pleasant Street. I know, well. right? <laughs> and <laughs> it's not to say maybe, maybe in the future there could be a second phase of the transition plan that um, the consultants come back and, and evaluate um, additional sidewalks in town if, if that's something that is needed um, as documentation. So, Or a, a, a thought comes to my mind. I wonder if we should ask for a little or use some money and hire somebody to videotape these sidewalks that are outside the town and have some models <laughs> like your friend Amira trying to cross, get out of his driveway, get on the sidewalks and the struggles and maybe use Zender because mm -hmm. you know you have direct experience with these sidewalks and then present to the town because if we wait for the second year when the money will be there to do another evaluation we are pushing it away for 10 years at least i love it i, mean, I love that so idea it, so it won't be in my lifetime i know you know so i mean i would be absolutely a hundred percent willing to do something like that yeah, uh, I've done it before. I did it a similar thing for UMass on multiple. Yeah, days. and these video things we can do it. What? With, all of us have iPhones. No big deal. And if we present it like a written thing here, please review this. And probably they might the, the council or whoever they probably must have some places where they can all sit at the same time so they will understand what we're talking about and you know if they put things postponed waiting for grants to happen apply for it each grant for the money to be here it takes at least three years yeah. at least if not longer so you don't get nothing and like making this a uh, committee a commission I have brought it so many times. Before Joe brought it so many times, I was looking at the agenda and I said, let me see if there's any update there. I didn't see anything. No. So that's what happens. Well, maybe that's one thing we need to do to make ourselves have more of a voice. That's right. right. I don't right. know anything about how to become a commission, um, but we can figure that out. Well, I know, but I mean, that's always something that we are thinking about it and we bring it up so many times you know that was being looked at what happens zero so if we become a commission if we get some money from the parking violations we could use it for little purposes like this maybe hire some young folks to take video of these things you know we could use it for our advocacy mm -hmm. Okay, so becoming a commission is one of the things we need to look into. And um, next steps, I suppose, would be to talk to Pat about how we can make our voice heard to the council vis-a-vis -vis capital planning. This is a really bad year for getting money because nobody has any money because, you know, the taxation, you know, there's a lot of yeah. reasons that there isn't money and there isn't state money and there, you know, I mean, this is just the worst time possible for this to come up, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be ready if and when things return to some kind of a normal state where, where money is coming into the state or money is coming into the town. So I think we need to have at least a process underway and, and a way to be heard and Pat in, um, you know, able to talk to the council about what our concerns are. Does anybody else? Um, I, I guess Maureen is going to make a, com a, a, a connection to Pat and, and then we'll figure it out. Um, so for the next meeting, we probably should figure out when we can have her there and she can help us figure this out. Um, and the commission, I can look into. I don't know how you become one. 
Uh, I'm actually on the um, mass.gov website and oh. th they uh, regarding how a town establishes a, a commission and um, they actually lay it out pretty pretty nicely it's very straightforward um, it, um, there are definitely some steps uh, the town would have to adopt Massachusetts general law chapter 48 G <laughs> um, uh, I would have to look into what that means um, but uh, Oh, oh, so that section of the Mass General Law um, is is accepting the establishment of a municipal commission on disability, and then um, there needs to be like an account made, and it needs to be um, approved by the town council. Um, so I, I would have to look into this um, um, in much more detail. Um, and talk to the town manager about this, um, about the formality of, of doing this. And again, it sounds like Pat would be a, a great uh, person to discuss this with the town council um, because it does look like the town council would be the ones that would um, approve this, would vote on whether this committee would then become a commission. What are the other things that are in the self-evaluation? So it's a uh, website signage. So it has to be town owned. It's not private owned, privately right. owned. Um, and it has to be uh, facilities that are open to the public. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Maureen, if we do get the grant, do you know, um, did you put a timeline for the scope of work and how it works? Yeah. So the timeline would be that it has, the uh, receipts need to be submitted to the state by the end of June, 2021. So that, so that means that the work would have to be done. As, as soon as the snow melts, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. I okay. will say that the town was awarded the same grant last year for a different project. And um, due to COVID-19, um, the state provided uh, extensions to communities. So Amherst took, um, requested a one year extension. So um, we, for last year's grant, we have until the end of June, 2021. So it seems that if we get this additional grant that both projects will be done at the same time. What was that? So the reason it? I ask is um, what input does this committee have into the decisions that they're going to make about the signals they're going to use, the, I don't even, the pavers, I don't even know any of the rest of it. Uh, who makes those decisions? Um, what, what input does this committee have into that? Um, I just, I just well, keep thinking about the roundabout and it doesn't seem like this committee was ever consulted about that. That was well before my time on the committee, but that roundabout is, uh, wasn't yeah. thought through from, yeah. a, from a pedestrian perspective. I hear you. Uh, we can certainly, um, so in January, um, there, so th that is the scope of work when it needs to be done. Um, I have to pull up the application, but um, after we find out whether we are awarded the money, um, we need to create the, the design. And I think we'll be doing that in, th this is a guesstimate. I don't have it in front of me. Um, that would be done in like January and February, and then we would put it out to bid. So certainly when the design is finalized, uh, we can share it with this committee for comment. Okay, or even during the process so they can make sure we, they know what the concerns are that we would like them to address. Sure. Yep. Um, yeah. And so those crosswalks, um, so it's, it's the crosswalk and the ramp that leads to each of those crosswalks would be part of the scope. Okay. Crosswalk. So they're allegedly, they're going to be raised in some way. They're going to have domes at the corner. They're going to have, you know, I mean, you know, right. That's what I, that's what I'm at. Is that, uh, right? I don't know if it's going to be raised crosswalks because the, the existing crosswalks, they are not raised. The crosswalk in front of the Jones library that's raised. But the crosswalks. Oh, at... I don't mean like I don't mean like speed bump. Oh, okay, yep. 
No, I just mean tactilely. Yes, yes. Available. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. So, you know, I guess the question is because the state of the art changes um, all the time in how they do these things and what they do them, you know, what the signals are like and stuff like that. And I think we need to know, I mean, we need to have input. It's not that we need to know what they're going to do. We need to have input before they decide what to do. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, uh, um, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we can put that on a, on a future meeting Maybe agenda. agenda. Okay. Um, and now, you know, what I could do is, uh, we already have the design finalized from last year's uh, project. And so you could take a look at that and provide input on oh, that. That would be great. Because they didn't As a sort of a baseline. And um, since we never, we still haven't been able to do that based on your input, we could potentially make revisions to last year's grant for the design and then apply it to this year's. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And so Xander had asked a little while ago, what, what was the, um, the grant from last year? And I'm going to pull something. Oh, I hold on a second. Let me, I'm going to pull up a map um, for those that can see it. Um, bear with me, which will show you exactly um, whoops, what last year's grant and this year's grant included. So bear with me for one second. I'm going to share my screen or try to. Okay. So let's see here, view, view. Uh, I don't know. Can you guys see this pretty well? I yeah. can see, but I can't <laughs> really see it well. Oh, okay, well, I so can, small. yeah, so, um, actually I can use the annotate, hold on a second. More. Oh, annotate right here. So uh, the purple indicate the purple indicates last year's grant that we were awarded. So oh sorry, this is not working. Um, so last year's grant included the uh, replacing the crosswalk and and ramp um, on North Pleasant Street in front of CVS, which crosses over to the the uh, formerly known as uh, Starbucks, the retail shop the formerly known as Starbucks, and also to replace the existing sidewalk known as Pleasant Street, which leads you back to the Boltwood Walk parking lot and garage. And then last year's grant included um, also the crosswalk uh, at North Pleasant and Coles Lane, which is right adjacent to the Brugger's Bagel um, location as a reference. And then this year's grant um, application included the crosswalk at North Pleasant Street and Kellogg Ave. So it's the, um, the crosswalks, let's see here, that would be the east-west crosswalk on the southern side and on the northern side. Does that make sense? And then um, the crosswalk, um, the southwest crosswalk, which is from the post office to the Unitarian Meeting House. And so those would be for replacing the crosswalks and the ramps. And then DPW is currently ordering audible beacons, five audible beacons for each of the, each end of the crosswalk. And nothing, no, they're not ordering any beacons for the uh, Main Street, Amity Street intersection? It wasn't part of the conversation, I would have to ask. Okay. They might have. I, I just, uh, I, we were only, we were, when I was talking to the town engineer, we were specifically talking about this MOD grant. Okay. Okay, so that's one thing that I would like to know anyway is about the audible beacons because they're definitely in violation, not having, you know, beacons. They haven't repaired them. They haven't done anything about them. They just let them die. Yeah, so, so currently there's been, uh, issues yeah i guess they've removed those audible beacons at least a few years ago i will say that the town has been you know trying to port purchase um 
you know, materials and equipment such as audible beacons and as a consequence of COVID-19, there is uh, a much delay of getting shipments. Um, yes. And so um, there has, it, it's, it, it's affected every industry um, right now. Um, and so transportation equipment such as audible beacons and, and other items um, have really been delayed um, by several months, so. So if we just had an update on, you know, what, what they've ordered, you know, and what the status of all this stuff is, that would be helpful, I think. What do you think, folks? Makes sense to me. But, I mean, this year, you mean, what they ordered well, this year? Yeah, I mean, you know, if we knew what was in the planning process, what they actually had ordered, what the intent, what the intentions are, that would be really helpful because then we would know that they have it, you know, taking, that they're taking care of it and we could move on to other ideas, but otherwise we can still get stuck in this stuff that we know they need to take care of and they might actually be working on it. We just don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I can certainly ask uh, for a list of purchases ordered. Or yeah, just the, the list of projects that they're waiting on materials for that might have to do with accessibility improvement in, in this in the town, whether it's the town center or other places in the town. Mm -hmm. um, and that sure. would be really that would be, I think, really helpful for us to know, just so we know what they're working on. And then so I guess what we're getting out of this is we um, yeah, we, we want to find out what we can have an impact on because things have reached the point in a lot of places in this town where there is real danger to people. Sure. Yeah, I, I can ask um, to get a, a list uh, for purchases and projects that have been ordered and, de and delayed. Um, Thank you. I'm sorry to make you do so much stuff. No, that's my job. Or, yeah, but... Uh, but it, it if you start asking me to do your laundry, that's that's when I'm going to draw the line. But <laughs> it's all reasonable questions. Anybody else have any questions or comments on any of this that we should include oh. in what we're trying to do now? Um, I have a question. Um, we do have 12 more minutes left in this meeting, but would it make sense just to recap of um, items that that you guys would like to get input from Pat and information that you would like her to pass on to the town council? So if I go through my notes, if you bear with me. Um, let's see here. Well, I guess so. The, uh, the in regards to the transition plan, um, what's the what's the process for Im for implementing it and advocating for it? Would that be it? Um, well, I think yeah. In regards to what's in the transition plan, for sure. Um, and given Xander's point the things that were not in the scope of work of the transition plan, but that are equally of importance. How do we bring things to the attention of this town, of the town council in a way that is going to let them know um, what the issues are? I want to know what they want to hear. What's the process? I don't know what they want, but what's the process by which we could go directly to them or to a subgroup of them to find out, uh, you know, to, to let them know what our concerns are. Um, right. And what, and what is being done and to report it, right? I mean, you say like the snow removal oh, every year, every year, you know, but we don't really see what is being done. We need to be updated. I, I mean, I would like to see that they are taking our concerns seriously. I am sure they are, but they are so busy, it just falls on the back burner. Some of the things we want are very expensive and need are very expensive. And some of the things are common sense 
and not expensive. Like, I'm not going past that line because that's the property owner's problem. That's not expensive. Right. Um, and it, you know, so I, I think, I think that we need, I guess we need to know what we need to do in order to have these concerns that keep coming up year after year actually heard and heeded to. And if they go and tell the town manager that the snow removal in the center of town is a real problem for people and a potential liability to the town, always say that, it's always helpful, um, then, then, you know, maybe something will happen. Um, but as far as the large processes, I want to know where, you know, how they want us to proceed or maybe not how they want us to proceed, how it would be most effective for us to proceed to, to get something accomplished. Okay. All right. And then, um, uh, regarding the commission on disability, um, it does seem that the town council would need to take action on that. So yeah, do we know, um, Sarah, you know about this more, much more than I do. Do you know anything about where in which towns they actually have a commission? I think Northampton has a commission and I know South Hadley has a commission. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And is there a way I for know. us to find out, Maureen? Like, is there a central uh, registry of these things so we could look it up easily? Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure if we call, if we emailed or called the Mass Office on Disability, they can provide us. Ah, okay. the information. They you have know what might be a good idea is if we call somebody from a commission and come and talk with us to see what uh, they can achieve that gives them more advocacy role or more say in the decisions. Okay. You know, that's what I'm very curious about it because I kind of know they really, every time you bring something, oh, they really want the best for us, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to see some action. Mm -hmm. be, I mean, I don't want to say they're not doing anything. I really, it would be very, very mean of me to say that. We live in a beautiful town and I think they're really trying, but maybe they really need to look wider their scope. Like besides downtown, there are other areas that are crying for help. Like the sidewalks you talked about. Myra, in your neighborhood, and also Xander talked about oh, they're, in your they're area. all over the town. Yeah. I mean, it's, and, you know. Okay, this is helpful. Um, uh, do we have time to do minutes or not? No, because I didn't do them. Oh, you didn't send them? No, I'm sorry. I, I've been juggling. <laughs> I was wondering why I hadn't been able to read them. I was going to say I hadn't found them. But yeah. that's good, because they weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I would like to get them done for the next meeting. So yeah, that's cool. All right. I I uh, I think I think this. You know, we have some work to do, and hopefully the town monitor will have a response to us, which is meaningful um, from our letter. Maureen, are you going to send that to him, or should I? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I can send it to him. I'll put it on letterhead and um, okay. send it off, and then I'll copy you. Okay, and uh, all right, so we'll, the next meeting is November 10th, right? Uh, yeah, let me look at my calendar here. November 10th, let's see here, November 10th. It would be, yes. Uh, oh, now, wait, that's true. We don't know when it's going to be. Well, let's see here. I like the idea of sticking to the second Tuesday if we can, but maybe a different time of day. I don't know what people think, but I guess it all depends on Pat and Christopher. I have to head to another meeting, so I have to step off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we all do. I'll, I'll um, send out an email um, and asking everyone uh, their availability. And if we can't just make a consensus, we'll keep it at the same time at the next meeting and then 
and then deal with it then. But okay. maybe maybe uh, by email, I'll try to figure out if there's an alternative day and time that works with everyone or okay. for most people. Okay. Great. Thank you to everybody. I think this was productive. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Have a great day. Thank Don't you. Everyone. Don't forget to vote. Oh, uh, roll call today. Oh. Um, oh. Xander, you voting. can leave because you're not a member. So Xander, if you need to leave. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, Myra, if you want to do uh, a roll call. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we, I guess we need a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Okay. Could somebody second, second it? Was that Elise or Ruth? It was Ruth. It was Ruth. It was Ruth. I keep second. it here. Okay, uh, Ruth, how do you vote? Vote to adjourn. Okay, Elise. Adjourn. And Sarah. Yes, to adjourn. And I'll vote yes too. We didn't talk about the election, um, but hopefully everybody will vote and there's nothing we can do about it right now anyway. The, uh, Hold our breath. There is something actually that I'm gonna go to a meeting on Zoom tomorrow night about voting. Um, the, the Secretary of State's office has made a mess of this, but this is not something that the town can do anything about right now. And if there's something that I need to report that I learned, I will send a note to everybody. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Have a great day. Right. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.